David Himmel, Himmel Brothers Leather. So the COVID epidemic has given me some time to do some videos about the jackets I designed. Now this jacket was sent back to me by a customer who wanted to change the tabs on the cuffs to use vintage original 1930s brass tabs. I have in my collection of things, I have been collecting old buckles and buttons for about a decade. So I have these beautiful Art Deco stamped brass buckles in a limited supply. So he asked me if I could customize those onto the sleeve the fasteners, the tighteners for his Chinook jacket. So it's not often that I have a Chinook jacket here to look at. So I thought I might show you his lovely jacket and talk about what's unique about this design. Now, this particular jacket was made in a semi-aniline, shinky, dark brown horse hide. This is a, a really beautiful, rich color. It's a wax oil finish, so when you get it, it starts out shiny and then it slowly dulls down. Uh, but the little bit of gloss really shows off the grain and the character of the horse hide. So it's a particularly favorite color for me and also a finish because of the way it really pops out the grain. If you're not into basic black, this is a really great looking color of hide. In this particular circumstance, this fellow got himself a blue Pendleton wool liner. So I have uh, wool from the famous Pendleton woolen mill in the United States and sometimes if someone wants a winter ready jacket they will use the Pendleton in the jacket. I mean I have multiple wools that I can line jackets in including an incredible Czech plaid merino Italian wool but this Pendleton is particularly nice very warm uh, the wool typically wears very well over time. This jacket is about a year old and if you can see the wool is held up fairly well. Now something to note, occasionally people ask me if they can get their jackets relined because some of my customers wear their jackets so much that they can wear down the lining and I always tell them I can do that but if you have a button-up jacket, you can't pull the liner out around the buttonholes. So it's very hard to reline a button jacket. In this case, as you can see, there's a leather facing. And when you have a leather facing, you can just separate the liner off the leather facing and reline it. I mean, it's still artwork to reline a jacket. You still have to hit all the holes in the leather to do it right and make it look perfect but it can be done more easily with leather facing so the chinook firstly i named it after the famous chinook winds that blow up and over the rocky mountains now ironically those those winds are either moist or warm and dry and bring crazy weather to the people who live in the east shadow of the mountains that being said, those winds create intense weather and storms, and I wanted to make a storm jacket. So this is the Chinook storm jacket. What makes it a storm jacket is that I based the design as an idea out of my mind of crossing a pea coat, like a Navy style pea coat, with a 1930s carriage jacket or maybe 1890s to 1930s carriage jacket. So let's say in the early period of jackets when men wore mostly fur jackets, they would have a very broad shawl collar. And this, this collar was designed to look very sporty when you were working outside, say riding a carriage or doing a delivery, 
but if the weather came up, you would flip this collar up, and in this case, it's this collar, and if you had a liner on it, when you flipped it up, it protected your neck from cold. So, especially if it was a fur cover collar, it looked very big and broad across the chest, and then closed up would give you good neck warmth protection. So, I wanted to make a double-breasted shawl collar jacket. This is actually quite difficult to do because a shawl collar doesn't, it's not symmetrical on a, a double breast. It's much harder because you've got a much bigger cross over here. So I had never seen a shawl collar double breasted style, peacoat style coat in my mind or in my archive. So we designed this one from scratch. And I have to say it was quite difficult. It's very difficult to make a, a loose cut that is both sporty but not too tight and, and looking constricting. So we started the pattern from scratch. I referenced some of my 1920s and 30s shawl collar coats. Uh, I wanted to use a double-breasted style. And then we designed the collar from scratch so it wasn't a traditional double-breasted 30 shawl collar but more primitive in a way and similar to my heron collar so in the end what i found was a really nice balance in the design between uh, a three-quarter length car coat with a slight fit to it with a generous nicely shaped sleeve and a, a really cool primitive style shawl collar and then in this case for this customer he asked for me to create a Canuck keystone back belt so in this one particular case for this coat we created this sort of unique finish for the back of course that that would be custom so this is a double vented back traditionally and doesn't have a narrowing closure but I put a closure on the back and uh, and then we have these simple pocket flaps on the front and as you can see when I hold up the jacket it has a really great shape to it let me just grab it by the shoulders so if a jacket has a great shape when it's sitting flat it's gonna have a great shape when you're wearing it this the 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 design of this jacket was designed, I had to work on shaping the back the right way so that there was good motion in the upper body. It's a bit tricky when a jacket goes down and below your hips because the, the action of walking and a jacket over your hips will actually impact the mobility of your upper body and arms because leather is very stiff so it has to work like a mechanical object. It's not like a cloth jacket where you can get more room because the fabric is flexible. Um, again, this jacket is sewn with 100% American made cotton, wax cotton thread from Connecticut. And in this case, the buttons are original old stock 1930s four hole buttons that I collected from an old button factory. So this is the Chinook. I'm really proud of the design. It's a really great... Oh, yes. See, we vent the liner. That's another thing. So when you have motion on the outside of the leather where you have expansion and contraction, you also need a vent in the liner so that the liner expands and contracts as well. Because otherwise you put stress on the liner and it will tear or it will feel uncomfortable. It doesn't help if the jacket expands but the liner doesn't it will eventually split the liner so that is the chinook storm jacket